Got another one for you. This one is none other than none other than Jay Munna. Jay Munna. Jay Munna. O Block Jay Munna. And let's put a rest in peace in front of that. And if you haven't done so already, definitely subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. I'm pushing these cases out as they come in. Let's get it in. All right, so starting off, we have a progress violence scene report, part of the case supplementary report uh, from the Chicago Police Department, of course. The offense and the classification is a homicide and a first degree murder. The address of occurrence is redacted. The location type is the residential yard, front and back. Original offense classification is a homicide and first degree murder. Number of victims, one. Number of offenders, one. Date of occurrence, September 2nd, 2013, at 1410, 100 hours. All right, this is a field investigation pro progress violent scene report. Victims, Howard Jerome T., male black, 21 years, date of birth, redacted, year 1992. Resident, redacted, description, five foot seven, 150 pounds, black hair, short hairstyle, brown eyes, medium brown complexion, sobriety, unknown, other identifications, type, other ID number, LR number, redacted, gangs, inf gang information, listed criminal organization, black disciples, gang identifiers, other, suspects, unknown, male, black, relationship to a victim to offender, unknown, victim's injuries, gunshot wound, Weapon used, firearm, weapon description, 9 millimeter. Transported to Jer Howard Jerome T. Transported to University of Chicago Hospital by Allied on September 2nd, 2013, 0 hundred hours. Victim. Location of incident, redacted, Chicago, Illinois, 291, residential yard, front and back. Date and time of incident, September 2nd, 2013, 14, 10, 100 hours. Death information, Jerome Howard T. Victim. Date of death, September 2nd, 2013, 14, 10, 100 hours. Pronounced by Ambulance 55 on September 2nd, 2013, 14, 2700 hours. Autopsy information, cause of death, multiple gunshot wounds, medical examiner number, Two one sept thirteen. Weather and lighting. Weather clear. Temperature seventies. Lighting natural. Lighting source natural. Motive codes undetermined. Cause codes DNA. Method codes person shot. CAU codes DNA. Other property recovered. Inventory number one two nine nine three two zero two. Evidence expended nine millimeter shell. Quantity four. Location found. Crime scene. Inventory number 12993213. Evidence expended 9mm shells. Quantity 9. Location found. Crime scene. Inventory number 12993220. Evidence fired bullets. Quantity 2. Location found. Crime scene. Inventory number 12993231. Evidence Blood swabs, quantity two, location found, crime scene. Personnel assigned, detective investigator Dale Potter Jr., number 21649. Reporting officer Gerald A. Creed, number 16802. Witnesses, name redacted, male black, 24 years. Date of birth redacted, 1988. Residence redacted, name redacted, male black, 55 years. Date of birth, day and month, redacted, year is not, 1958, residence, redacted. Name, redacted, male black, 69 years, date of birth, month and year, uh, month and day, excuse me, redacted, year is not, 1944, residence is redacted. Witness name is redacted, female black, 25 years, date of birth is redacted, year is 1988, Residence, redacted. Employment, redacted. Business, redacted. Other individuals involved, redacted. Residence is redacted. Family member notified. All right. And we have IUCR associations for Howard Jerome T., victim. Unknown for the suspect. 
and unknown for the suspect. So two suspects currently. All right. We have victim Jerome T. Howard, redacted, Chicago, Illinois, 60609. Male 120, date of birth, redacted, 1992. IR number, redacted, SID number, redacted. FBI number, redacted. Gang, Black Disciple, O Block, Associate of, Redacted. Arrest history, convicted felon. 11 arrests, 3 felonies, 7 misdemeanor, 4 convictions. Medical examiner, 21st, 21, September 13. Wanted, unknown, injuries, multiple gunshot wounds. Taken to University of Chicago Hospital, DOA. Pronounced by CFD, Ambulance 55. Notifications, Redacted. Female one, date of birth, day and month, redacted, year is not, 1975, redacted, cell phone. Weapon, handgun, nine millimeter, location, redacted. Date, day and time of occurrence, September 2nd, 2013. May, oh, excuse me, Monday at 1410, 100 hours. Weather and lighting, clear, natural and warm. Manner and motive. Unknown at this time, possibly gang related. Evidence inventory number 12993202. Four expended 9mm shells. Inventory number 12993212. Nine expended 9mm shells. Inventory number 12993220. Two fired bullet shells. Inventory number 12993231. Two blood swabs. Overall digital photos of crime scene, overall video of crime scene, close up digital photos of victim. And we have personnel listed here, the personnel assigned to the crime scene. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have witnesses, and there is a redaction block underneath of that. And we have female one, date of birth, day and month redacted in 1988. Then we have redacted cell phone. Male one, date of birth, redacted, 1958, refused to give phone number. Underneath of that is redacted, male one, date of birth, 1988, redacted, cell phone. Underneath of that is redacted, male one, date of birth, redacted, 1944, redacted, cell phone. Investigation. The reporting detectives were assigned to a man shot at 66 redacted South Roads. BT-314 was handling the preliminary investigation. Upon arrival at the scene, reporting detectives learned that victim Jer Jerome Howard, excuse me, has been pronounced at 1427 hours by CFD Ambulance number 55 while en route to the University of Chicago Hospital. Reporting detectives noted the following. Rose is a one-way street with vehicle, vehicular traffic moving southbound. The area is residential with several two-story buildings on either side of the street. The address of Redacted is a two-story brick residence with an adjacent cement paved north driveway slash lot that is fenced in. Responding detectives were told by BT-320 Sergeant Irvin that the victim, Jerome Howard, had been visiting Redacted who resided at Redacted. An unknown offender approached Howard and shot, shot at him multiple times. Howard ran east through the north lot of 66 Redacted, where he had been shot at again. Howard fell to the ground. The offender fled in an unknown direction after the shooting. Responding detectives noted several shell casings and a bullet fragment in front of 66 Redacted South Roads. In the adjacent north, lot there were small there were more shell casings excuse me a fired bullet blood and an iphone reporting detectives later learned the phone belonged to redacted the occupants of redacted no relation to victim were interviewed independently redacted heard at least 10 gunshots from her yard when she looked outside she observed the victim lying on the ground bleeding her redacted redacted was performing cpr on the victim Redacted did not know the victim. Redacted had been watching television in the bedroom. He heard a lot of gunfire. He did not see who was shooting. He learned from Redacted that somebody had been shot in their side yard. Redacted added that the Redacted has been vacant for six months. 
A canvas of the area revealed witness redacted observed Howard exit a small white auto and walk through the gate at 66 redacted south north south roads excuse me as redacted walked to his kitchen he heard gunfire redacted lay on the floor he heard the sound of screeching tires he did not witness the shooting another witness redacted related he had been sitting in the rear of redacted he heard several gunshots after the gunshots redacted observed a male black 17 to 22 thin build and wearing a baseball cap run north in the alley the male black had a gun in his right hand Redacted thought the male black ran to an auto that had been on Marquette. He had nothing further to add. Witness Redacted related he had been sitting on the front porch of his Redacted. He heard six, six gunshots. He ob six shots, excuse me. He observed a male black wearing a blue white t-shirt running from the alley. The male black entered an auto that was parked facing west on Marquette. The auto traveled west toward King Drive. Redacted could not provide a color or description of the auto. BT5803 PFI. I do not know how to pronounce that name. Number 17629 and BT5820. Sergeant Friel, number 819, arrived from the crime lab and recovered the shell casings and bullets. Blood swabs were obtained from the yard where the victim fell. The scene was also videotaped and photographed. Detective Rosh, number 21314, and Detective Crane, number 20213, interviewed Redacted at University of Chicago Hospital. Redacted related that she had known Howard between 15 to 20 years. On today's date, Howard had come over to Redacted. He helped her bring her laundry out to her auto, which was parked in front of Redacted, went back into her apartment to retrieve her purse, she heard approximately 10 gunshots. She ran back outside and observed Howard laying on the side of her building. She performed CPR. She did not see who had shot Howard. Howard's redacted arrived at the hospital where they were notified of his passing. The medical examiner's office requested Howard's remains for further study. Case number 021, SCP-13, was assigned. Report by... Detective T. Servin, number 20971. Detective D. Potter, number 21649. Detective D. Stanek, number 20953. Detective T. Crane, number 20213. Detective W. Rosh, number 21314. The next file, the next document we have is a progress report. This is a field investigation progress report. Victims, Howard Jerome T. Male Black, 21 years. We know the date of birth is 1992. Just gonna keep scrolling down. This looks to be much of the same information from the previous report that just uh, progressed forward into this one. And we have a investigation HW434411 date and time assigned September 2nd 2013 at 1442 hours victim Howard Jerome T aka J money male black 20 birthday redacted year 1992 address redacted Chicago Illinois 60609 IR number redacted SID number, redacted. FBI number, redacted. Gang, Black Disciple. O Block, Associate of, redacted. Medical Examiner, September 21st, 2013. Wanted, unknown offender, injuries, multiple gunshot wounds. Taken to University of Chicago Hospital. DOA, pronounced by CFD Ambulance 55, weapon, handgun, 9mm. Location 66 Redacted, South Road Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Date, day, and time of occurrence, September 2nd, 2013, Monday at 1410 hours. Interviewed, Redacted, Female Black, 25, year 1988. C, number, Redacted. Investigation, 
This report is to be read in conjunction with any other reports generated under RD number HW434411. On September 8, 2013, the reporting detective interviewed witness redacted at Area Central Detective Bureau. Redacted the following not verbatim. Redacted victim Jerome Howard. Redacted. On September 2, 2013, Howard met redacted at her. Redacted. Gave Howard redacted car. 2007 white four-door Hyundai Sonata, Illinois' license number, redacted. To use as she was going to redacted. Howard drove her to redacted. At approximately 10.05 hours, Howard picked her up at redacted in her white Hyundai. Howard's redacted, only known to redacted, was also in, her, in the car. Redacted as male, black, 2021, 5'2 to 5'4, 115 pounds, light complexion, and his hair was in medium length braids. They drove to Redacted, retrieved her laundry as she was going to wash, Redacted. Howard, Redacted, drove her, Redacted. Howard, Redacted, drove off as Redacted. After finishing, Redacted called Howard to come pick Redacted up. Howard came back in the white Hyundai Sonata, Redacted, Howard. Howard helped Redacted place her laundry into the trunk of the white Sonata, Howard's redacted, redacted, was in the redacted, went back into the redacted to retrieve the purse. As redacted was inside, the redacted heard several gunshots. Redacted came outside and saw redacted car was gone. Redacted walking towards the side of the redacted and observed Howard lying on the ground bleeding. Redacted performed CPR on Howard. The police and ambulance arrived on scene. After the ambulance transported Howard to the hospital, Redacted observed Redacted car parked on the corner of 66 and Rhodes. Redacted was outside of the car crying. Redacted what had happened to which Redacted Howard had been followed. The offender got out of a car and started shooting Howard. Redacted jumped into the driver's seat of the white Hyundai and drove away. Redacted took back Redacted car and drove to the hospital. Redacted did not go. Redacted. Redacted could not provide a last name for Redacted. Did not provide Redacted phone number. Redacted cell phone was returned to Redacted. Had dropped it at the scene while performing CPR on Howard. Redacted had nothing further to add. Detective Timothy Hervin, number 20971, Area Central Detective Bureau, September 14, 2013. The next document we have is another progress report that was filed on uh, date submitted September 25th, 2013. This progress report lists the victims. Of course, is Jay Mona, Howard Jerome T. Suspects are still unknown. A list of time of death, location of the homicide and the personnel assigned along with the witnesses. They appear to be the same witnesses listed in the other reports. Investigation, date, time, and location of photo array. September 20th, 2013, 1235 hours, 5101 South Wentworth. RD number HW434411. Persons conducting photo array, Detective Servin number 20971, Detective Potter number 21649. Person viewing photo, <coughs> excuse me, person viewing photo array. Redacted, male, black, 21. Birth month and day redacted. The year is not 1992. Persons viewed in photo array we have redacted, CB number redacted, and the rest are redacted with CB numbers redacted. Person identified in photo array, none. Inventory number 1301029011 one CPD photo array advisory form, one page of six iClear photo, photographs. Investigation. This report is to be read in conjunction with any other reports generated under RD number HW434411. In furtherance of this homicide investigation, the reporting detectives conducted a photo array with witness redacted, was present when Jerome, victim Jerome Howard was shot by an unknown offender at 66 Redacted South Roads on September 2, 2013 at 1410 hundred hours. 
Responding detectives prepared a photo array of various subjects by use of iClear based on the description of a possible offender provided by Redacted. After reading and signing the CPD photo array advisory form, Redacted viewed the prepared array. He did not identify any of the photographs as being the offender. The advisory and photographs were inventoried under number 130-10290. And that was done by Detective Timothy Servin, Detective Dale Potter at Area Central Detective Bureau on September 25, 2013. We have another progress report on the next page. The date this document was submitted was October 19th, 2013. This is a field investigation progress report. And we're gonna scroll down. A lot of the information is still the same. They are listing out the evidence they also inventoried that we just read and they list the same witnesses that were listed in the previous report pages. All right, and we have an investigation and they interviewed Redacted, female two, date of birth, Redacted, 1992, social security, social security number is Redacted, Redacted cell. Uh, we have a male one, date of birth, Redacted, 1988, Redacted cell. And we have another male one date of birth redacted except for the year 1992. Now we're getting down to an investigation. This is an area central progress report. Please report, please read this report in conjunction with all reports generated under this listed record division number. Detective W. Marley, number 20182, and Detective D. McNally, number 21135, reached out to witness redacted to schedule a second interview. While speaking with Redacted, reporting detectives learned of Redacted. Detective McNally conducted research on Redacted and located Redacted posts which described Redacted as being near the sign of the shooting death of Howard. The following is a summary of the interview with Redacted. Said interview occurred on September 15, 2013 at Redacted. Said interview should not be considered verbatim. Redacted on the day of the shooting, <coughs> excuse me, Redacted on the day of the shooting was with Redacted barbecuing in the backyard. Redacted stated he, she heard six or seven gunshots. Redacted stated she looked towards the sound of the gunshots and observed an unknown male black subject attempting to jump a fence a few homes down. South, Redacted, the, sub, the unknown subject did not make it over the fence. Redacted stated she then observed the same subject walking northbound in the alley and then eastbound on 66th Street. Redacted described the subject as male, black, 20 to 30 years of age, approximately 5'10", approximately 160 pounds, wearing a baseball hat facing forward, a blue strip, striped polo shirt, and, a blue, and blue jeans. Redacted stated she did not see the subject enter a car, but the talk on the street is that he did redacted stated she did not know who saw the subject enter a car redacted stated she did not see the shooting but feels she can identify the subject fleeing the scene while interviewing redacted reporting detectives learned that redacted was waiting for redacted in a car located in the parking lot the following is a second interview with redacted said interview should not be considered verbatim Redacted related the same information and description as previously stated on the day of the murder. Male black, 17 to 22 years of age, baseball cap, thin build, build handgun in his right hand. Redaction further stated he recognized the subject as someone he has seen in that neighborhood in the past. Redacted, he did not see the shooting. Redacted further stated that he would be staying with his redacted. The following is a summary of the interview with Redacted. Said interview occurred on September 20th, 2013 within the Area Central Detective Division offices. Said interview should not be considered verbatim. Redacted, he was in a car with Howard on their way to pick up Redacted. He was seated in the front passenger seat while Howard was driving. Redacted, while in the neighborhood traffic, he observed a silver prime color Chevy Impala with two subjects inside it. 
Redacted stated Howard pulled up next to said Impala while at a stop sign. Redacted stated he looked into the Impala and observed the driver to be a male, black subject, wearing long dreads and a redacted, redacted baseball cap. Redacted stated the passenger seated in the front was tucked away in the seat, hiding from view. Redacted, Howard pulled in front of the Impala, passing same and continued to redacted. Stated the Impala followed from a distance. Redacted stated Howard pulled over in front of Redacted. Stated Redacted was waiting in front with her laundry. Redacted stated Howard exited the car and helped Redacted with the laundry, placing it into the trunk. Redacted stated he moved into the back seat and observed the same Chevy Impala at the end of the street near the corner of 67th and Rhodes. Redacted stated while Seated in the back seat, he heard multiple gunshots. Redacted stated he sank to the floor of the back seat. Redacted stated he then jumped into the front seat and drove away with the car. Redacted stated he drove around the block and called Redacted, informed him that Howard was shot. Redacted stated he parked the car in front of Redacted. Redacted exited and observed Howard on the ground. Redacted, he entered the car and drove to Redacted to pick up some Redacted, informing them that Howard had been shot. Redacted, he returned to the scene and Redacted at the end of the block, 66 and Rhodes, due to police and fire vehicles blocking traffic's, traffic. Redacted stated he ran to the scene and met Redacted. He and Redacted followed the ambulance to the hospital and Redacted stated he did not see who shot Howard. Based on redacted interview regarding the driver of the Chevy Impala, reporting detectives created a photo array based on the driver's description in the area of the incident. The photo array was displayed for redacted, failed to make an identification. The details of said photo array are part of a separate report. This investigation continues. Report of Detective D. Potter, Detective D. Servin, Area Central Detective Division, Homicide Team A. And the next document we have is another progress report. And this document was submitted on November 29th, 2013. This is a field investigation progress report for the victim, Jay Munna. Scrolling down to get through some of this documentation, they are at, they are listing the evidence. They listed the witnesses, and let's go through these. The name of witness, of course, is redacted. Male, black, eighteen. We have another witness here that is a female, white, twenty-one years of age, and a date of birth is redacted at nineteen ninety-two year. We have another male 21 years, black, male black 24 years, female black 25 years. All right, and we are getting into an investigation. This is an area of central progress report. Please read this report in conjunction with all reports generated under this listed record division number. On October 6, 2013, reporting detectives spoke with the redacted the following is a summary of the interview with Redacted, which should not be considered verbatim. Redacted stated she had a redacted conversation with a subject named Redacted. Within said conversation, Redacted related the person responsible for Redacted death is a subject named Redacted. Also related that Redacted was also in the car with Redacted, Jerome Howard. Redacted Stated, Redacted exited the vehicle as soon as Howard stopped the car in front of Redacted. Redacted provided snapshots of the Redacted conversation with Redacted via email. Using interdepartmental databases, reporting detectives located a Redacted IR number Redacted and attempted to con contact SAME on numerous occasions. Negative results were met. On October 20, 2013, reporting detective issued an investigative alert number redacted with no probable cause for arrest with instructions 
to contact area central detectives upon the contact of or arrest of redacted IR number redacted. Reporting detectives conducted research on the nickname redacted and discovered redacted IR number redacted. Redacted physical description is consistent with the descriptions given by the witnesses redacted and redacted. Address is listed as redacted, which is approximately 1.5 miles from the crime scene. Reporting detectives also discovered multiple case reports where redacted his redacted from the crime scene. <clears throat> Excuse me. On November 4th, 2013, 003rd District officers arrest redacted IR number redacted for criminal trespassing. Area Central was notified and Detective Roberts number 20764 responded. The following is a summary of the interview with redacted which should not be considered verbatim. Redacted stated on the day of redacted murder, redacted met Howard and redacted while Howard was driving. Redacted stated he was seated in the redacted seat while redacted was seated in the redacted seat. Redacted stated after driving around for a while, Howard received a phone call from redacted. Stated after said phone call, Howard started driving toward the 66 block of South Roads, where redacted stated while they were driving two roads, he observed a silver car that appeared to be following them. Redacted stated the driver and passenger of the silver car appeared to conceal themselves as they pulled alongside of the silver car at a stop sign. Redacted Howard parked in parked the car in front of the redacted, excuse me, Howard, exited the car and walked up to redacted, stated shortly after Howard ex exited. Redacted exited the car and began to walk down the block with the intention to meet up with redacted that was redacted as he was walking. Redacted observed an unknown male, black subject walking from the lot next to redacted with a gun in his right hand. Redacted black subject walking from the lot next to redacted with a gun in his right hand. And I apologize for rereading that twice. Redacted stated he heard several gunshots and saw the same unknown male black firing said gun at Howard who fell, fell to the ground. Redacted Howard attempted to stand up and run though redacted. The unknown subject followed Howard and continued to shoot him. Redacted believes the unknown subject ran through the lot at redacted, stated the car Howard was driving sped away. Redacted, he later met with Redacted at the crime scene. This is a report of Detective D. Potter, Detective D. Servant, and Area Central Detective Division Homicide Team A. Scrolling down, we have another progress report, and this was submitted on the same day as the previous one. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. Doesn't look to be any new information here inventory for all of the crime scene and the witnesses we listed already prior to that I'm gonna keep scrolling down and we have an investigation and it is just gonna read please read this report in conjunction with all reports generated under this listed record division number Based on information provided by the victims redacted, reporting detectives generated a photo array which included redacted, IR number redacted. On November 14, 2013, re responding detectives met with witnesses redacted. Responding detectives requested of both witnesses to view a photo array. Both agreed. Upon viewing, neither redacted identified a subject. For the details of said arrays, please view the appropriate lineup progress report. Reporting detectives are currently attempting to identify the redacted identity of redacted. Through researching said redacted, reporting detectives contacted the Jackson MS Police Department and requested assistance. Said assistance was granted and reporting detectives are waiting for a response. Report of Detective D. Potter, Detective D. Servin. Homicide Team A. All right, we have another, this is a Canvas report this time, and this was submitted on September 3rd, 2013. This would be a Canvas of the crime scene. 
gonna scroll through to see if we can notice any new information. And here we have an investigation and there's a redaction block and underneath of that male white 54 was inside the redacted and heard seven, eight, seven to eight gunshots. Walked outside and saw a crowd of people, did not see the shooting. Redacted, vacant, redacted, vacant, redacted, no response, redacted, vacant property, redacted, male black, 49, 1964. Was inside, redacted, and heard five shots, silence, then three more shots, looked out, redacted window, and observed victim lying in the redacted. Victim was bleeding from head and torso, did not see the offender. Redacted, male black, 35, 1977. Sitting on, redacted, heard gunshots, jumped over the fence and ran west. Redacted, male black, 53, 1960, was not redacted at the time of the shooting. Redacted, female black, heard shots but didn't see anything. Redacted, refused name, did not hear or see anything. Redacted, male black, 28, 1974, Heard gunshots, but didn't see anything. Female black, 56, did not see or hear anything. Redacted, vacant apartments. Redacted, vacant. Redacted, female black, was inside, heard gunfire. Redacted, female black, 78. Redacted, sitting in, redacted, heard two gunshots. As she got up, she heard more gunshots. Looked out, redacted window, and observed a white car driving away. There was a red frame around the, black, the back license plate. Investigation. This report is to be read in conjunction with any other reports generated under RD number HW434411. While at the scene of this homicide investigation, reporting detectives conducted a canvas of the 66 redacted block of South Rose with the above listed results. Detective Timothy Servin, Detective Dale Potter, Detective Dale Stanick, Area Central Detective Bureau, September 3rd, 2013. And the next document is a uh, another uh, supplementary report, Method CAU Code. And this was submitted September 2nd, 2013. And we're going to scroll down until we, we see any uh, new information here that will present itself. And there was none on that report. So we're getting to the next report, which is a progress report that was filed on February 24th, 2014. This is a field investigation progress report. All right, and all of that information is still the same and the suspect is still unknown. Other property recovered, their inventory for the crime scene and the detectives, as well as the witnesses to be the same witnesses as the other documents listed so we're going to scroll past that as well something interesting to note here is that we have associated cases hw457240 all right and the investigation we have another investigation document and this one is evidence inventory number 13005570 Based on record division number HW457240, Springfield Arms, model XD9, 9mm, semi-automatic pistol, serial number is redacted. ISP lab case number C130378898. Inventory number 12993713, three fired bullets and four fired bullet fragments. ISP lab case number C130356322. To be re-interviewed. Redacted. Date of birth, 1995. This is an area central progress report. Please read this report in conjunction with all, of, all, all reports generated under this re record division number. Based on the facts of this case, reporting detectives conducted research using the internal database within the CLEAR systems. Responding detectives learned of an incident involving multiple arrests and, recover and a recovered firearm. Said incident occurred on September 18, 2013, 16 days after the murder of Jerome Howard. Reporting detectives requested 
of the Illinois State Police Crime Lab to compare the ballistic evidence recovered during the investigation of the homicidal death of victim Howard with the firearm recovered as document under record division number HW457240. The Illinois State Police Crime Lab forwarded a laboratory report dated January 2nd, 2014, stating that five of the seven fired bullets slash fired bullet jacket fragments, inventory number 12993713, which were recovered from the remains of victim Howard, were fired from the handgun, inventory number 13005570, which was recovered during the, the investigation of loud reports slash shots fired at 61 redacted South Indiana HW457240. Two of the seven fired bullets, fired bullet jacket fragments could not be identified or eliminated. During their investigation of the incident document under HW457240, six individuals were arrested. Based on above, reporting detectives have attempted on numerous occasions to contact witness redacted, IR number redacted. Reporting detectives have been unsuccessful. Reporting detectives have generated investigative alert redacted with no probable cause for arrest. For redacted, IR number redacted. Report of Detective Potter, Detective T. Servan, Area Central Detective Division, Homicide Team A. The next document we have is a progress report, and this report was submitted on March 1st, 2014. Suspects are still unknown. A lot of the information is still the same. The witnesses are still the same. All right. And we're getting into another investigation, date, time, and location of photo array. It is February 27th, 2014, Thursday at 10 o'clock, 5101 South Wentworth. RD number HW434411. Persons conducting photo array, Detective Servant and Detective Potter. Persons viewing the photo array, redacted male black, 19, 1995. Persons viewed in photo array, redacted. Persons identified in photo array, none. Inventory number 13116771, one CPD lineup advisory form signed by, redacted six eye clear photographs. Investigation. This report should be read in conjunction with all other reports submitted under RD number HW434411. In furtherance of this homicide investigation, the reporting detectives conducted a photo array with victim slash witness redacted. Jerome Howard was shot and killed at Redacted on September 2nd, 2013. Redacted given a CPD photo array advisory form to which he read and signed. <coughs> Excuse me. Redacted shown six eye clear photographs to which he did not identify any of the photographs as being the offender who shot and killed Howard. The advisory form and photo array were later inventoried under inventory number 13116771 at unit. 610. All right. And we have another progress report that was submitted on March 1st. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And scrolling down through these documents, a lot of the same information in this progress report as was listed in the other. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, witness, we have a big redaction block under that. Inventory, inventory number 13116771. Photo array and advisory form. All right. And this is an area central progress report. Please read this report in conjunction with all reports generated under this record division number. On February 26, 2014, responding detectives was notified that redacted was arrested on an unrelated matter. The following is a summary of the second interview with Redacted. Said interview occurred within Area Central on February 27, 2014. Said interview should not be considered verbatim. Redacted on the day Jerome Howard was shot and killed. Redacted Howard while Howard was driving. Redacted Howard. Redacted. Entered the car. Redacted Howard. 
redacted. Howard was acting like he was on something, talking and crying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Redacted drove around for approximately 30 to 45 minutes. Redacted Howard and wanted to be picked up. Redacted Howard drove to Redacted and parked in front. Redacted was outside. Howard exited and started loading laundry into trunk. Redacted someone called Redacted back into Redacted. Redacted walked up to the car and started talking to him. Redacted could not remember Redacted. A gray Impala drove by Redacted for that car. Redacted car came around again and parked at the end of the block behind them. Approximately redacted, an unknown male black subject wearing a hooded sweatshirt and holding a gun appeared in the cut next door to redacted. The subject started shooting at Howard. Howard fell and so did the gunman. Redacted Howard tried running through redacted and attempted to jump a fence. Redacted the gunman continued shooting. Redacted the gunman turned towards the car and started shooting. Redacted jumped into the driver's seat and drove us away. Redacted and his first name is Redacted. Responding detectives requested of Redacted to view a photo array based on the recovery of the murder weapon. Redacted agreed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Upon viewing the photo the array, Redacted failed to identify the shooter. Redacted didn't Redacted that he did not have a good look at the shooter's face. Redacted. Responding detectives located a photo of Redacted. IR number Redacted based on a past arrest. <clears throat> Reporting detectives show Redacted said photo and Redacted identified Redacted as the same subject, subject he feels is responsible for Howard's death. Redacted stated since Howard's death, he has seen Redacted. Reporting detectives attempted to identify Redacted but were unsuccessful. For the details of the photo array shown, please see the appropriate progress report. And that's it for that report there. We're coming up on another <clears throat> uh, case supplementary report. This is exceptionally cleared open. And we have number of victims and number of offenders too. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And this was submitted on March 13th, 2018. And just scrolling down pages, getting through a lot of the same information that we've once read already. All right. And we have an investigation. This is an area central cold case, exceptionally clear, open, other slash death of the offender report. Type of incident, homicide. RD number HW4344411. Additional RD numbers HW457240. Recovery of murder weapon, separate incident, HX202951. Death of the offender, shot and killed by CPD. Location, redacted. Date and time, September 2nd, 2013, 1410 hours. Date and time assigned, August 4th, 2016, 0800 hours. Victim, Jerome Howard. Nickname, J Money. Male, 1, 21 years old at time of death. Date of birth, 1992. Last known address, redacted. Gang, Black Disciple, O Block Faction. IR number redacted, SID number redacted, FBI number redacted. All right. And we're getting into the injuries. And we have um, here one gunshot wound, number one. Enter left upper forehead, exit right temple. One gunshot wound, enter outer side of mid right forearm, exit inner right arm at bend of elbow. Number three, one gunshot wound, enter right shin, exit back of right knee. Number four, one gunshot wound, enter left mid chest, exit upper left back. One gunshot wound, number five, enter left lower chest, exit right buttock. One gunshot wound, number six, enter right flank, exit side of lower right chest. 
one gunshot wound number seven, enter outer side of left thigh, exit front of left upper thigh, one gunshot wound 98, to right chest, partially exit, left mouth, lodge. One gunshot wound number nine, to upper left abdomen, lodged. One gunshot wound number 10, to mid left back, lodged. Pronounced on September 2nd, 2013 at 1427 hours by CFD number 55 via telemetry with University of Chicago Hospital. Taken to hospital, taken to University of Chicago Hospital via CFD number 55. Family notification redacted. <clears throat> Offender, a uh, Rasan Shaw, dead. Male one, 19 years old at time of death. Date of birth, 1994. Gang, gangster disciple, Jaro City faction. Dead, shot and killed by CPD officers recorded under RD number HX202951. Second offender, unknown, male one, last seen driving, gray silver, colored sedan. Weapon, probable 9mm handgun, 9mm shell casings recovered from the scene. Vehicle used, unknown, gray silver sedan. Manner or motive, offender approached two victims. Uh, excuse me, offender approached victim who was on foot and shot the victim slash gang conflict. Property taken, DNA. And they list all the evidence from the crime scene and they have some CPD pod, some CPD pod video, which is interesting. And they do have a weapon inventory as well. That will take us to the end of that document. And they list all the detectives. All right. We have interviewed a male 125, date of birth 1992. <clears throat> Excuse me, last known address is redacted. All right, and then that investigative alert redacted, issued and expired. Then we have a male 122, uh, date of birth is redacted. Then we're coming down, we have a male 128. In 2016 to 2017, multiple negative attempts to recontact. So they're trying to contact these witnesses and they're not able to contact them. Uh, they're re-interviewing witnesses as well. Um, and they're not having any luck, it seems. All right. Getting into this investigation. This report should be read in conjunction with all other approved supplementary reports submitted under this RD number. On September 2nd, 2013, Jerome Howard was shot and killed at Redacted. The initial investigation was conducted by area central detectives Potter and Servin. They responded to the scene of the shooting at Redacted and were informed that Howard was pronounced dead while en route to the hospital by CFD number 55. It was noted that Rhodes is a one-way street with traffic traveling southbound. The block is residential with two-story buildings. Redacted is a two-story building. There was a paved and fenced-in lot adjacent to the building to the north. Sergeant Irvin, BT-320, informed the detectives that Howard was visiting a Redacted at Redacted when an unknown offender shot, him, shot at him. Howard fled through the north paved lot while the offender continued to shoot at him. Howard fell to the ground, having been struck by the gunfire fire, and the offender fled in an unknown direction. It was noted that there were several shell casings and a bullet fragment in front of Redacted. There were additional shell casings, a fire bullet, blood, and a cell phone in the paved, North Paved lot. It was later learned that the cell phone belonged to Redacted. It says BT-5803 PFI New Dock and BT-5820 Sergeant Friel arrived and processed the scene as detailed above. The recovered bullets and shell casings took swabs of the blood and took overall photos of the scene. The occupants of the second floor of Redacted were interviewed. Redacted heard gunshots and looked outside. Redacted. Jerome Howard. Redacted heard the gunshots but not see anything. During the canvas, possible witnesses were identified. Redacted that he was sitting in the rear yard of Redacted when he heard several gunshots. Afterward, 
Redacted saw a male black run northbound in the alley armed with a handgun in his right hand. Redacted thought the male black with the handgun ran to a vehicle on Marquette. Redacted described the male black as being 17 to 22 years old, then billed wearing a baseball cap. Redacted was also interviewed and stated that while Redacted seated, Redacted heard six gunshots. He saw a male black wearing a blue, white t-shirt run from the alley and enter a vehicle parked west on Marquette road. The vehicle traveled west, but Redacted could not describe it. Detective Rosk and Crane met with and interviewed Redacted. Howard heard approximately 10 shots. She came out to find Howard shot, Redacted, but did not see any offenders. Jerome's ha Jerome Howard's Redacted arrived at the hospital and was notified of his death. On September 8, 2013, Redacted was re-interviewed at Area Central by Detective Servin. Redacted Howard. Redacted on the day he was killed after Redacted. After work, Howard. Redacted. Howard. Redacted. Laundry and was transported. Redacted. Howard. Redacted. Re ha Howard. Redacted. While inside. Actually, make sure I got the right line. Yep. While inside, heard the gunshots. Redacted. Outside. Redacted. Redacted discovered Howard lying in the paved lot. Redacted. After Howard was transported via CFD ambulance, redacted vehicle parked at 69th and Rhodes, redacted. Howard had been followed, redacted. Offender exited a car and shot Howard. During the shooting, redacted took back possession, redacted. On September 15, 2013, Detective Marley and McNally attempted to recontact redacted and in doing so learned, redacted, murder of Howard. Detectives Marley and McNally met in, with and interviewed Redacted. Redacted essentially that, Redacted, the time of the shooting. Redacted heard six to seven gunshots. Redacted towards the gunshots, she saw an unknown male black, 20 to 30 years of age, approximately 5'10", 160 pounds, wearing a baseball hat, blue and white striped polo shirt, and blue jeans. The subject attempted to jump a fence, but didn't make it over. Redacted watched the male black proceed northbound in the alley toward 66th Street Marquette, but did not observe where he went. She added that others said he entered a vehicle and the vehicle drove away, but, did, but Redacted did not remember who said that. While interviewing Redacted, the detectives that Redacted was waiting for, in, waiting for Redacted in a vehicle nearby, Detectives Marley and McNally met with and re-interviewed Redacted. Redacted essentially the same facts as he had previously done. Redacted added that he recognized the male black armed with the handgun as someone he had seen in the neighborhood in the past. On September 20, 2013, Redacted interviewed at Area Central after having been identified as Redacted Howard, Redacted the day of the murder. Redacted Howard, Redacted, the day of the murder. He stated that while Redacted Howard were returning, Redacted pulled next to a primed Chevy Impala. Redacted, driver to be male black with dreadlocks. Redacted, the passenger, passenger was tucked down. Redacted took as an attempt to conceal himself. Redacted Howard drove to Redacted to pick up Redacted. Howard exited the vehicle to help Redacted, noted that the Chevy Impala had followed them and was parked near 67th and Rhodes. Redacted moved to the back seat, but could no longer see as Howard had opened the trunk. Redacted heard multiple gunshots and sank to the floor. After the shooting ended, Redacted jumped into the driver's seat and drove away. Redacted drove around the block. Redacted, who informed him that Howard had been shot, Redacted seen and observed Howard on the ground. Redacted drove away again. Redacted and redacted. He informed some of his and Howard's redacted. Howard had been shot. Redacted parked. Redacted CPD and CFD were now on the scene. Redacted. Based on redacted description of the driver in the area of occurrence, a photo array was compiled. Redacted viewed it but could not make an identification. On October, on October 6, 2013, Howard's redacted informed Detective Potter and Servin that an individual with a redacted had told redacted, redacted murder, and that redacted the offender. 
Detectives Potter and Servin attempted to identify Redacted and created a photo array containing a Redacted based on the physical description of the offender by the witnesses as well as the information provided by Redacted. Detectives Potter and Servin were able to identify Redacted issued a no probable cause investigative alert. On November 4, 2013, Redacted was located and interviewed. All right. And we have Redacted was with Howard. Redacted, murder. Redacted noticed a silver car following them. Redacted next to the silver car. At a stop sign, he noticed both the driver and front passenger attempt to conceal themselves. Redacted, Howard exited the vehicle. Redacted exited the vehicle and was walking down the block. Redacted saw a male walking from the lot adjacent to Redacted, armed with a handgun in his right hand. Redacted as the male black approached and began shooting at Howard, who fell to the ground, who fell. Redacted Howard got up and attempted to flee in the adjacent lot as the offender followed Howard and continued to shoot at him. The offender then fled through the lot. Redacted sped off. Redacted met. Redacted back at the scene. On November 14, 2013, Detectives Potter and Servin met with Redacted. Both viewed photo arrays but could not make an identification. <clears throat> the de detectives became aware that on September 18, 2013, 16 days after Howard's murder, BT363B responded to a shots fired call. They made multiple arrests and recovered a 9mm handgun. The incident was documented under RD number HW457240. BT363B arrested Rasan Shaw, redacted. The Recovered handgun was identified as a Springfield Arms Model XD 9 9mm semi automatic pistol. Serial number is redacted and was inventoried under inventory number 13005570. The same handgun was subsequently identified through ballistic testing at the Illinois State Police Crime Lab as the weapon that was used to murder Howard. On February 26, 2014, Detectives Potter and Servin met with and re interviewed redacted essentially the same facts as he had previously, but added that there was a fourth individual in Redacted. Howard and Redacted could only identify this individual. Redacted, all efforts to identify Redacted were negative. Redacted viewed a photo array containing all six of the arrestees from the 003rd District incident that resulted in the 9mm handgun being identified as the murder weapon. Redacted could not make an identification. 2016 Area Central Cold Case Investigation. In July of 2016, reporting detectives were con was contacted by Detective M. Backstrom, who had interviewed Redacted in CCJ. Redacted Howard's homicide, per Detective Backstrom, the offender was Rayson Shaw. Reporting detectives researched the homicide investigation up to that point and noted that Rayson Shaw was one of several individuals arrested in connection to the recovery of the murder weapon. Reporting detectives further learned that Rayson Shaw was shot and killed while armed with a handgun by Chicago police officers. This incident occurred on March 29, 2014, was recorded under RD number HX202951, and was ruled to be justifiable. On August 4, 2016, reporting detectives accompanied by Detective Backstrom and P.O. Pacino met with and interviewed Redacted, aware from personal conversations he had with Redacted shot and killed Howard. When asked for more specifics, Redacted stated that it had been a few years since Howard's murder, so could not give specific as to who else may have participated in these conversations or where they may have taken place. Redacted stated that it was common knowledge Redacted Shaw was the offender. The following day, August 5, 2016, responding detectives contacted P.O. Kilroy due to his knowledge of the 003rd District gangs. P.O. Kilroy informed reporting detectives that he had spoken, redacted. At the time, redacted informed P.O. Kilroy of the, ba the same basic facts as he had to reporting detectives on the August 4, 2016 interview. P.O. Kilroy informed reporting detectives that he had interviewed redacted Redacted, Rayson Shaw being the offender, Redacted, P.O. Kilroy. Redacted was aware from personal conversations he had with Shaw that Shaw 
had shot and killed Howard. He also could not offer more specifics due to the fact that the murder and subsequent conversations had happened in 2013. Redacted had also stated that it was Redacted Shaw was the offender. Reporting detectives learned that both Redacted were in custody for first degree murder charges resulting from an incident that occurred in the south in the southern suburbs. Their cases were assigned to the Markham Courthouse. They had both reached out to the Cook County State's Attorney's Office through their respective defense attorneys and offered to provide information. ASA Schroeder, Schroeder, Schroeder of the Cook County State Attorney's Office found both to be credible and subsequently contacted the Chicago Police Department to aid in the investigation of their respective statements. Both redacted were given proper letters by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office witnessed by their defense attorneys. Reporting detectives contacted Redacted via telephone. Redacted had heard multiple times that Rayson Shaw was the offender who shot and killed Howard. Redacted heard that Shaw had been shot and killed by, by the Chicago Police Department. Redacted did not remember who had told these things and had no direct knowledge herself. Reporting detectives attempted to interview Redacted but could not locate him. An investigative alert with no probable cause to arrest was issued for Redacted. On December 8, 2016, Redacted was placed under arrest for an unrelated offense, processed in the 003rd District, and the investigative alert was triggered. Reporting detectives met and re-interviewed Redacted in the 003rd District. Redacted is essentially that he was on the 6600 block of Rhodes along with Jerome Howard when Howard was shot and killed. Redacted seated in the white vehicle. Redacted, Howard, exited the vehicle. Redacted, offender approached Howard, produced a handgun, and shoot Howard. The offender then fled on foot. Redacted, he returned to the scene and noted that Howard was in fact shot. Redacted, the shooter, was the same individual he had seen in the passenger seat of the Chevy Impala in traffic earlier. Redacted denied that there was a fourth individual. Redacted Howard redacted that he had previously claimed not to have seen the shooter because he was afraid and did not want to be involved. Redacted offender was an individual redacted named Rayson Shaw. Redacted Shaw was from a rival gang, the Jaro City Gangster Disciples, while he was a member of the O Block faction of the Black Disciples. Redacted that Howard redacted were also members of the O Block faction of the Black Disciples. Redacted he heard that Shaw had been shot and killed by the Chicago police sometime in the past. Redacted agreed to view a photo array, but refused to be audio and videotape. Redacted signed the advisory form. Accordingly, Detective Esperanza acted as the blind administrator, conducted the photo array. Redacted resigned Shaw as the shooter. The photo arrays were documented in a separate lineup, supplemental report, and copies of the array and advisory form were subsequently at inventory. Reporting detectives researched and contacted Redacted via telephone on March 16, 2017. Redacted. Re-interviewed and stated essentially the same facts she had in 2013. Redacted agreed to view a photo array. R responding detectives contacted the Deerfield Beach Police Department Broward County Sheriff's Office in Florida. Reporting detectives were put in contact with Detective Anthony Cavario. Reporting detectives emailed Detective Cavario a CPD advisory form as well as a six-pack photo array. Detective Cavario conducted the photo array with Redacted on March 17, 2017, but Redacted could not make an identification. The forms were returned to reporting detectives via email and copies were subsequently inventory. Reporting detectives researched and made many efforts to locate Redacted. Reporting detectives' research led to meeting and interviewing Redacted. Redacted essentially stated that Redacted, not to be in contact, Redacted. Redacted was contacted and stated that Redacted, responding detectives with identifiers, Redacted. Responding detectives continued to research and, uh, and identify Redacted. Reporting detectives contacted the Haver Hill Police Department. Redacted turned identified. Redacted agreed to be interviewed by reporting detectives. Reporting detectives spoke via telephone. Reporting detectives, but they were redacted and redacted had not seen redacted. Only contact redacted was via email. She supplied reporting detectives with an email address 
Responding detectives attempted to redact it with negative results. In, two, in September 2017, reporting detectives re-interviewed Redacted to reporting detective that he saw the movements of the offender but had only viewed the individual from behind and never saw his face. Therefore, he could not identify him, nor would he view a photo array. In late 2017, reporting detectives attempted again to recon recontact Redacted, claimed to have no contact with him but directed reporting detectives to Redacted. Redacted was contacted but claimed to have no contact Redacted, directing re yeah, reporting detectives to contact Redacted. Reporting detectives requested the assistance from CPD personnel assigned to the Great Lakes Fugitive Apprehension Task Force. They could not locate Redacted. All efforts to contact Redacted have been negative. In conclusion, it is the contention of the reporting detective that this investigation has proven to the satisfaction of the Chicago Police Department that on September 2nd, 2013, Rayson Shaw shot and killed Jerome Howard at Redacted. In the course of the investigation, it was learned that Rayson Shaw, while armed with a handgun, approached on foot and shot Howard as Howard was loading laundry into a vehicle. Two third-party witnesses, Redacted, came forward in 2016, Redacted, found credible by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. An eyewitness redacted positively identified Rayson Shaw as the shoot as the offender. Excuse me. The murder weapon was recovered during an arrest of Rayson Shaw and other members of the Jaro City faction of gangster of the gangster disciples. Additionally, the victim's redaction had heard on multiple occasions that Rayson Shaw was the offender, although redaction was not an eyewitness. All the witnesses agreed that the motive was gang conflict. Howard was a member of the O Block faction of the Black Disciples, while Rayson Shaw was a member of the Jarrow City faction of the, of the Gangster Disciples. The shooting occurred while Howard was in the Jarrow City faction of the Gangster Disciple territory. This investigation further revealed that Shaw was himself shot and killed by Chicago police officers on March 19, 2014, and was reported under RD number HX202951. Reporting detectives request, re, excuse me, request that this case be exceptionally clear, open, other exceptional, due to the death of the offender. Report of Detective P. Denahan, number two zero seven three nine. And the next document we have is a morgue report, and this was submitted on September sixth. You're scrolling through here. And they are listing the gunshot wounds uh, for a second time. Uh, we read that uh, earlier in the document. And here we have the autopsy document, which I will rotate for us. Victim Howard Jerome. And these are, I mean, he was riddled, sprayed with, sprayed with bullets. So unfortunate, and may may Jay Mona rest in peace, for sure. I mean, seems to be eight to what I can nine, nine shots, and some lodged, which is never a good thing. Unfortunate. And below that, we have our evidence submission form, where they are submitting all the evidence for the case. More evidence submission forms. And I believe more evidence submission forms. We have a laboratory report. And yeah, that's just uh, them receiving the swabs. And they are analyzing those. This is a copy of the findings from the crime scene. All of the, the 9mm 38 class exhibiting six of uh, these are bullet casings. C13356328 and C1337898 were compared due to previous identification of the fire cartridge case. They're just comparing the uh, ballistics. 
is more DNA. And they got some. It says a human male DNA profile was identified in exhibits 2A and 3A, which matches the DNA profile of Jerome Howard. They were able to match his DNA of Jay Munna. And this is a progress lineup report. Go ahead and scroll down through that. And this lineup uh, photo array took place on November 14th, 2013. Subjects included in the photo array seems to be all male black. And the names are redacted as well as the CB numbers. Investigation on November 14th, 2013, a photo array was displayed for witness redacted. Prior to viewing the photo array, witness redacted was presented and signed the required line up photo array advisory form, which was subsequently inventoried under inventory number 1304-9380. Upon viewing the photo array, witness, witness redacted failed to identify a suspect. Refer to the supplementary report prepared for the particulars of this investigation. This report should be read in conjunction with all of the reports under RD number HW434411. All right, and the report was prepared by the detectives. And we have another progress lineup uh, report, which we'll scroll down past. And it looks to be yeah, similar to the uh, previous lineup. And it may be actually a copy of that document. And this seems to be another progress lineup report. And I believe we're getting down to the end of the case here. And I believe these will be... Yep, and here we are. Date and time assigned, December 8th, 2016, 0800 hours. Date, time, and location of photo array, December 8th, 2016, 8 1500 hours, 7040 South Cottage Grove, 003rd District Lockup. Persons conducting photo array, Detective Esperanza. Persons viewing photo array, redacted. Persons present at photo array, DNA. Persons participating in photo array, array. Uh, we have the first name redacted, second name redacted, third name redacted, fourth name Rayshawn Shaw, fifth name redacted, sixth name redacted. Persons identified in photo array, number four, Rayshawn Shaw. Person inventorying photo spread, Detective P. Dinahan, number 20739, BT5143. Comments made by counsel for arrestee, DNA. Unusual circumstance during photo array, DNA. Evidence, inventory number 1381725, one CPD advisory form that was signed, six single page photos, six single page arrestee profile pages with demographic identifiers for the above photos. And that uh, previous one was six single page photos, one initialed redacted signifying redacted identification. And here we have an investigation. The reporting detectives was assigned as the blind administrator to conduct a photo array within, with and redacted. The photo array was conducted in the 003rd district lockup. Reporting detectives met with redacted. Reporting detectives explained the photo array procedures to redacted. Read the photo live lineup advisory form. Redacted declined to have the photo array audio videotape. Redacted signed the advisory form accordingly. Reporting detectives presented redacted with the photo array. After viewing the photo array in a single page format, redacted positively identified number four, Grayson Shaw, as the individual that he saw shoot and kill redacted Jerome Howard. Could not make any identification. Report of Detective Esperanza, number 20140. And that's the end of the Jay Money case. Thank you guys for sticking through that with me. Wanted to go ahead and knock that all out. Man, what a case that was. Definitely comment in this video below on your thoughts of it. Man, and this was a good one. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, 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 and like the video. 
as that keeps me motivated and helps me bring more content to you guys. Thanks so much for listening. Peace.